recognized. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, this is the most disturbing debate that I have engaged in in the 111th Congress. And to hear what I've already heard from one of the most distinguished members of the Judiciary Committee is a little bit dismaying to me. Let me say this. I'll answer one of his questions. What does the bill do? And I agree. I'd love four hours. And perhaps we'll be debating this bill after the vote, regardless of its outcome. This bill rolls back the decision, the blatant decision of Citizens United in the Supreme Court by using the three tools that the court said that we could do to make their decision different. First, we can increase disclosure. Two, we can require disclaimer requirements on advertisements. And three, we can limit foreign influence in our elections. One, two, three. Now, the danger of Citizens United decision, the most shocking decision I have read in the Supreme Court in many, many years is the threat of groups who attack candidates for office without ever having to tell people which corporations are bankrolling these ads. This is what the Disclose Act, the bill on the floor, is designed to prevent. This bill permits some long-established advocacy groups to forego some of the new disclosure requirements. But if these groups take more than 15 percent of their money from corporations, then all the requirements of the Disclosure Act kick in, and they have to stand by their ads just like candidates do. In Citizens United, Justice Stevens, who argued uh, the much more persuasive, with much more persuasive reasoning, his position in this case, dissenting, said this, the Constitution does in fact permit numerous restrictions on speech of some in order to prevent a few from drowning out the many. For example, restrictions on ballot access and on legislators' floor time. He stated that corporations are categorically different from individuals. Here's what he said, in the context of election to public office, the distinction between corporate and human speakers is significant. Although they make enormous uh, contributions to our society, corporations are not actually members of it. They cannot vote or run for office because they may be managed and controlled by non-residents, their interests may conflict in fundamental respects with the interests of eligible voters. And then he closed with this sentence. Our lawmakers have a compelling constitutional basis, if not a democratic duty, to take measures designed to guard against the potentially deleterious effects of corporate spending in local and national races. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from California.